After my screening Thursday, the first thing I did when I was walking home in the rain was pull out my phone and jump into the Triple Beam Streams group chat and let the boys know what I thought about the movie. I think I wrote, Chris Nolan who? Uh, rest in piss, bozo. Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin, I'm a film critic and you're watching the Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, television series reviews, that sort of thing. So if you like movies and you like movie adjacent popular culture and you like to see somebody pick those things apart, you're in the right place and you should consider subscribing. Today, I'm finally reviewing The Batman. As it says in the thumbnail, this is going to be a spoiler-free review of The Batman. I saw it Thursday night, and uh, the movie's not out for another few days, and uh, look, this is not going to be spoiler-free for the usual reasons I have to make things spoiler-free, where I'm trying really hard not to piss off, like, the industrial fandom complex, and I just don't want people to be angry at me for giving away twists or, or what have you. This is actually going to be spoiler-free, because one of the main reasons I enjoyed this film so much is because of the fact that I went in largely blind. You're as blind as a bat! This is the rare case of a superhero movie where the trailer has not given away the entire game through repeated and uh, revealing TV spots. And because so much of my enjoyment of the film came from not having my judgment clouded from all those things and being able to just experience this stuff new, I would like to pass that along to you. I will say up front that I do have many, many more thoughts about this film than I will be able to fit into this video. So I am planning to, uh, for now anyway, to rewatch the film again once it's actually out and to do a follow-up video where I have more spoiler-filled thoughts that will be designed just for anyone who has already seen this video and has seen the movie already so I don't have to dance around certain ideas or topics. If that seems like something you guys actually want to see, let me know in the comments below uh, and ask me any questions you might have about the movie so that I know to address them in my follow-up video. Now, one of the pitfalls of being a film critic and getting to see a movie before all your friends and your people who read and watch your stuff is that you run the risk of either, if you hated it, completely harshing everyone's buzz for the movie, or if you loved it, potentially overhyping the movie for anyone that has not yet seen it. When it comes to the Batman, I don't think I'm in any danger of harshing any buzzes about this film. And after a few days of quiet reflection, I don't really care if I overhype the movie, because I just truly loved it that much. In 2020, I made a pair of videos about the Batman, one questioning whether Matt Reeves' plans to make another darker, more realistic Batman movie were really the best thing to do, given the looming shadow of the Nolan trilogy, and the other, reacting to the first teaser we received and positing the direction I thought the movie could potentially go in, with a lengthy rant about my issues with all the cheap Batman beats up poor people discourse on Twitter. Rewatching the latter video, I realized that I had indirectly called the direction Reeves has chosen to take the character, and I could not be happier with the finished product. For all the people who were worried about Matt Reeves' take on the Batman being too realistic and saying that they felt that Chris Nolan already mastered the realistic approach to the Batman character, I implore you to go back and rewatch the Nolan trilogy. Because after seeing the Batman, I feel like there are serious limits to Nolan's specific approach. For all the scenes of Bruce and Alfred banging out the logistics of building the Batsuit and sourcing parts through shell corporations in other countries, when we finally see Bale in the costume, he's a man encased in rubber growling in a cartoon animal voice. Even the slimmer Dark Knight costume leaves him looking faintly ridiculous, given Nolan's often po-faced take on the source material. And hey, as much as I love Batfleck, and as important to me as Snyder's Batman arc remains, Snyder was so insistent on making a Batman that looked like Frank Miller or Jim Lee drew it, that they, as my friend Cody put it, had our man out there built like Kane Hodder. But from the moment you see Robert Pattinson in the suit in this new film, and not just in the action scenes, but scenes where he's surrounded by regular people, it looks real. And not just because Reeves is pursuing some super serious version of the character, but because Batman, when he's at a crime scene with other cops, should look grossly out of place and uncomfortable to look at, something this film captures perfectly. Years ago, Darren Aronofsky and Frank Miller worked on an adaptation of Batman Year One that never saw the light of day, which, having read it, was probably for the better, all things considered. It felt more like Passion of a Darkly New than a Batman movie, but the one major concept I think Reeves borrowed from that film was making Batman look like something a guy could make himself, with a slight sci-fi bent to the gadgets and gear. It's a take on Batman that feels grounded and real, but never feels deeply ashamed of the source material. It doesn't feel insecure about being an adaptation of a comic book. And for the first time in the character's live action on screen history, it is a Batman movie that is about Batman, Bruce, the character, and not just the iconography or the mythology of the Batman idea, or worse, just an excuse for A-list stars to choose scenery as colorful villains. It's really fucking refreshing. Robert Pattinson is immediately one of the greatest actors to ever play this role. It's clear he did a ton of research and read a shitload of comics, sure, 
as every superhero actor does alongside steroids and Men's Health magazine interviews. But listening to him in interviews discuss his approach and the real granular thinking he did as a performer about blending the psychological journey of the character with being self-aware about the mythology was really interesting. And it's not just empty navel-gazing either. His Batman, to me, really feels like an artful synthesis of so many different takes on the character, both on screen and in the comics. You can forget all of that Keaton was the best Batman, but Bale was the best Bruce Wayne stuff. To be clear, I am 35 years old, Michael Keaton is still the best Batman, and it is literally illegal for me to suggest otherwise, but Pattinson is playing the whole character, not some cartoon binary or whatever. Whether he's in costume or not, you can always see the sad, vengeful boy in his eyes, and his struggle to avenge that core trauma. It's an incredible performance that you can truly hang a three-hour crime drama mystery thriller around. Sure, there's some hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes. There's a really dope car chase. There's a couple of explosions. There's some carnage. It is a big tentpole blockbuster film, for sure. But other than some minor horror elements, this is, through and through, a three-hour mystery thriller crime drama. And as such, everyone in it performs to that higher level. Everyone in it understands this is both a serious, you know, quote-unquote, real movie that also has pulp elements, and they all bring it accordingly. Everyone in the cast goes totally sicko mode, except Paul Dano, who I'm personally not the biggest fan of, who I do think does some good work in the film, but for other parts of the film feels sort of like a laughable, logical conclusion to the Heath Ledger Joker school of villain acting. I wasn't a huge fan of his performance, but I didn't dislike it enough to detract from the larger whole. Zoe Kravitz is great as Selena. She's literally a real movie star now, as I talked about in my Kimmy video. And John Turturro was actually a real surprise as Carmine Falcone. But I sort of think Colin Farrell's work as the Penguin is maybe the biggest signifier of what makes this movie different and special. Look, we all made jokes about the prosthetics and fat suit making one of the hottest men alive look like character actor Richard Kind. Can I tell you something, girl talk? That's one of my favorite things about doing a play. But in the context of the movie, his performance is a lot more in line with Robert De Niro's work in The Untouchables, another incredible film that blends pulp and genre with a classical, sort of timeless approach to its storytelling. In a recent interview doing the whole superhero movies are weak shit, Francis Ford Coppola went even further than most of his 70s era brethren in calling out how even the good blockbusters, like Carrie Joji Fukunaga's No Time to Die or Denis Villeneuve's Dune, the ones where his studio actually let an auteur in the building, feel very similar and function in much the same way. Even the more mature, more nuanced big budget flicks fall into many of the same stylistic and total patterns. But the Batman truly feels the most like a quote unquote real movie any comic book adaptation has in a very long time. It's a movie built on patience, on intercutting glances, and on allowing the audience to put two and two together without constantly telegraphing or explicitly outlining things for them. I'm positive that some of the I only watch Star Wars and superhero movie crowd will be bored by it, but I am also sure that some who otherwise do not watch regular movies may be disproportionately blown away by its approach to storytelling, such that they'll be ridiculed on film Twitter for not understanding that Reeves is just smartly borrowing from a lot of similar films he was inspired by. The same way that a lot of superhero comics in the modern age and modern era are so incestuous and repetitive because the people that made them grew up reading superhero comics, and only superhero comics, I feel like a lot of newer superhero movies feel like they're stuck in the same rat race because they're all aiming to do the same thing for the same audience. They're not really interested in pushing the form forward, in my opinion. A lot of the best superhero comics are written and created by people that read things from outside the genre, and they're able to bring things from outside that world into this world in a way that adds texture and, and nuance and, and, and soul. Reeves is clearly a true, ardent, and, and passionate fan of Batman. He likes the Batman comics. You can tell he's not slumming it in the genre. But because he's pulling from a more interesting array of influences, the resulting finished product has more texture and more patience and uh, more heart, I feel like, that a lot of these films tend to have. I initially thought the Kurt Cobain references in interviews, the use of Nirvana, and the references to Gus Van Zandt's last days were a little pretentious and curious, but in context, it really does help lend the film a unique quality. The score is phenomenal. This is maybe the first super movie I've seen in a very long time that had, like, recognizable and necessary music, creating tone and sense of place and time. It's a movie that doesn't have a bunch of trailers that give away the entire plot, set piece by set piece, to the point that watching it feels like a foregone conclusion. And save for one lone scene that uh, is written okay, but I don't like the way it's shot or performed. It's, it's my least favorite scene in the whole movie. I think it's actually a genuinely terrible scene. Outside of this one scene that I imagine a lot of you will probably just love, it's a movie that feels like a movie, first and foremost. Not like a delivery service for fan fiction. Not like brand management. Not like uh, franchise seed planting. It, 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 other than a little bit. But it, for the most part, 
it's like this self-contained, engrossing, and engaging thing that most of these movies don't feel like anymore. Like, this genuinely feels like an aberration and uh, an important one. And it feels like a movie that a lot of people that criticized it when it was first announced are going to have to eat their words over. The funniest thing to me is all the angry discourse from over a year ago about the scene in the trailer where Bruce beats the shit out of this random guy. All the bad faith proselytizing about how Batman is an inherently flawed concept. All the billionaire beats up poor people rhetoric. When you see the fucking movie and you see how integral and how important that violence, that needless violence and, and that particular, that feeling, that, that feeling of revulsion, when you see how necessary that is for the arc, for the story they're telling in the larger picture, you will feel really dumb for all of your very, very silly tweets. I didn't set out to, and I was not hoping for, a Batman movie that would like silence all of the dumb Batman takes accounts that have like proliferated on the internet for the last few years, all of the cheap jokes about how Batman is just like Bezos and like goth gear or whatever. Like I didn't, I wasn't, I was not clamoring for a movie that addressed those ideas. I, I didn't care about that. I think those people are generally uh, very unserious. It feels like a happy accident that the story Reeves wanted to tell happens to be one that does address some of those concerns and critiques in a way that is still thrilling and still engaging and still exhilarating without it turning into this sort of PowerPoint presentation virtue signaling that I think certain people on Twitter want from Batman. It's so much more than the boring Batman philanthropy movie people seem to want. It's a haunting and moving portrait of a man motivated solely by grief and regret who has to face the violent and toxic way he deals with that pain isn't working, not for him or his city and that fear is simply not enough to enact change, that the city, and Bruce himself, need more than that. They need hope, and we could all use a little bit of that too. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Batman. Those are my spoiler-free thoughts on the Batman. I have much more to think about the film, much more to say that I will do in a follow-up video. And again, if you guys do want to see that, please get subscribed to the little bell icon so you get notifications when I put out new videos, so you'll know the minute my deeper take on Batman is out. And if you have any questions about the movie or things you want to my opinion on about the film, you can put those in the comments below too, and I will try to address them in that video once I've had the time to see the film a second time. So thanks again, hope everyone's doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other. I will see you in the next video.